Hey you guys, I just harvested some of these Ashitaba seeds. So in this episode, I want to talk to you guys about how to protect your seeds while it's in its the, their development stage and then to harvest and how to save them properly. So these are some Ashitaba seeds. They are some rare Japanese herbs. I really love using these for juicing and to make tea out of. You guys should definitely learn more about this plant if you don't know what it is. I'll link some episodes down below for you guys to check them out but yeah in this episode about seed saving you can follow these steps and save any of the seeds that are in your garden even the tiny seeds like parsley or cilantro seeds or celery seeds you can do the same uh, using these methods Hey you guys, how's it going? Today I wanted to show you guys some of the flowers and the seeds on the Ashitaba plants. They've been flowering for the past couple of months now. They're looking so beautiful. So I want to share with you guys the experience, how the flowers look, what you might you know, expect from your flowers, what kind of pest might come during this time, and how to protect the seeds because they are really prone to some black little bugs which I believe are little black aphids in this area so I got to get them protected to save the seeds. Let's come on in close. I want to show you guys how the flowers look like. I'm starting to see little you know formations of the seeds growing. There's five Ashitaba plants flowering right now but three out of the five are ginormous completely towering over me. It's about uh, six, no, I think it's like seven feet tall. The tallest one is actually pushing beyond the frame that I built for it. Ashitabas get a little more sensitive to the strong summer sun and the taller they get, they definitely get exposed to more sun in this narrow garden. So the tallest one has actually pushed beyond the height of the trellis and I think it is about eight feet tall and that is counting from the start of the trunk of the Ashitaba. As for the two smaller ones here, one of them being the child of this one, it's basically just a, another a shoot that came out and I believe you can probably separate the two but I never did and so this one being so closely to the mother plant could be a you know a reason why it never got really big but also sometimes the side shoots may not produce as well as the ones grown from seeds so uh, it's just an experiment you have to do and then the second smaller one is about four about four to four and a half feet tall which is way shorter than the other three but uh yeah, i don't really know why this one is, is so much shorter but you know the the plants will flower whenever it wants whenever it feels like it's reached that time of its life and this one is doing just that it's at four and a half feet tall the seeds looks like um it started flowering a little later than the other three gigantic plants so i can't give you the full judgment as to you know whether smaller plants will produce just as healthy or less healthy seeds compared to the the larger plants since this one started flowering a little later than the larger plants so the seeds have not formed to its full size but overall the health of this plant looks totally healthy to me it's just um, happens to be a more petite plant now if you look at the clusters, you can see how not every single seed is really large, meaning not every single flower was pollinated or pollinated well enough. Usually Ashitabas flower in the fall or late fall and then it'll kind of start seeding throughout like winter to early spring or something. So this is kind of a little unusual that I'm seeing this flower in the summer, in the middle of summer now, but I trust that the plants know, knows best as far as what it needs to do. So whenever it puts out these flowers, it really has this pungent odor that attracts a lot of the tiny little bugs and the larger flies. It just gives off the smell that is not floral or anything but it is a bit strong when you walk by this area and it's attracting all of these bugs to to help pollinate the the flowers and because it is in you know the middle of summer right now it 
It's really quite warm for Ashitabas because they like a little more cooler time. So the best time to grow them with the most beautiful lush leaves is in the cooler season in Southern California, and that's in uh, zone 10. They also grow pretty well in zone 9 in the winter as well. So they do like the cooler weather. That's why I placed them in, the, uh, you know, part shade or sometimes in full shade also, as long as you do get some bright light, but it is away from direct sun, it can produce some really deep dark green leaves versus having a little more yellow undertone to the leaves when it's exposed to more sun. And because it is so warm right now, it is prone to spider mites. Now the leaves, even though there's some spider mite, you can just snip those off, throw them away, and then the stems are actually still good to consume. I would save the stems and juice with them, or you can dry them and make tea. As the seeds develop, a lot of times I would start to see these black little aphids would also start growing, settling all around the seeds. So after a while, these seeds will get the juice sucked out of them. So this year, I really want to protect the seeds really well. So the first thing I will do is to, well, of course, to cut off the any kind of imperfections like the spider mite issues on the leaves. I would give a good hosing uh, on the seeds that are all uh, formed. I would not hose out, you know, the ones that are flowering because of the pollen. You don't want to get rid of the pollen, otherwise it's not going to seed. And so just the ones that are ready Formed, you can see that the, the seeds are growing. I would hose those off, especially the ones that I can see a little bit of some webbing around it. Maybe if there's any bugs, of course, I'm gonna clean it up really well. And then I will take these netting, which I have been using a really large ones for uh, the larger plants to keep the critters out. Hopefully placing these bags over the seeds will help keep some of the pest away. When you're pruning your ashitabas or, you know, harvesting the stems, be sure to not get your clothes stained because these resins really stick on and it's almost impossible to get out. This one has been on here probably for like a month now, but it's still kind of wet underneath the, the skin. Now it's time to give the plants a good cleaning before I bag up the seeds. Otherwise, I would be trapping the pest in the bag as the seeds continue to develop. And I love using the mist setting on the hose because it seems to really uh, do a good job cleaning without damaging the leaves and the delicate parts of the plants. After you hose them off, you can either wait for them to dry a bit before putting the bag on, or if you're in a hurry, you can definitely just go ahead and put the bag on. I think I should have gotten a bigger bag so that I can put the entire branch in one bag rather than individual clusters. Or you can just get these in a roll and cut the size sheet you need and just wrap around these. I think that would be another fast way to do it. I'm just going to be bagging up the seeds that are really plump right now. I don't have to bag every single cluster out here. But just to know that the clusters that form really healthy seeds, I do want to save them. It's been about five or six weeks since I've shown you guys how the ashitawas were blooming and starting to form the seeds. So now I'm going to be harvesting some of the seeds that are ready. If you guys want to come in closer, I'll show you guys the seeds that were not covered versus the ones that were covered. Here are the seeds that I didn't get a chance to cover up. As you can see, it is all full of these pests here. So you can see not all seeds developed. Some are really plump. And these ones here did barely anything. Here's one that's been covered up. So it's definitely a lot better. You're not getting that much of these, the pest inside. Grab a bucket and start harvesting any seeds that are ready. Okay, just be careful there. Yeah? 
These are some of the seeds I just picked out. Here's some colanders of different sizes. And this is just a solid bucket for the bottom to catch the seeds. If you're working with smaller seeds like parsley, you would have to find maybe use like a sifter so that it could have a much might much finer holes that your seeds wouldn't fall through the the sift remove these seeds all the good seeds so here's this one Here are the ashitaba that I just separated from the stems. I think the best time to harvest ashitaba is when it's still got a slightly, you know, green color to it, but it also feels dry to the touch and they would fall off very easily from that cluster. So that's when you know that they are ready. And for other seeds like parsley or celery seeds, generally you do want seeds to fully dry out before you harvest them to save. So the next step to do is to pour it into, I have this as my trash to pick it, to, ca uh, to catch it. So I'm just gonna sift. You might see some of the seeds would fall through here, the really skinny, narrow seeds, but that's okay because those are not the healthy seeds anyway. I just want to keep the healthy seeds. I usually sift it a few times. That's completely up to you. I just like to get them really clean. So this is the first sift. It's like there's a lot of mosquitoes around here. <laughs> okay, and then just pick out all the really big stuff the branches, random leaves from the garden. So step two takes a little bit of time. You can see how there's just so much of this random stuff that I'm gonna sift away. See all that that's sifted down here. Here are some that I sifted through the other day. These ones came from the ones I bagged up to protect them from the pests. They are so nice and clean now, even the ones that were not bagged. It just takes a little more work, but at the end you'll still get the same result. The thing that I am concerned about if you don't bag them is that if you forget to get to it, the seeds eventually will get, you know, the juice would get sucked away by these little aphids. So I still think bagging them is better. You know, you just have such a busy lifestyle that you forget to get, them, get to them after, until God knows when. At least your seeds will be safe being in the baggie, right? After sifting these through, I would just put these uh, lady seeds out for about a, a week or so, just in case if there's any moisture. So I would just put them in a, a flat tray or a plate like this, put it in a, a room with a good airflow, just mostly in the shade area for about a week or so until it's completely dry and then I would store them. Ideally, I'd like to store these in a glass jar, maybe even an, an amber glass jar with an absorbent uh, pack. So you can buy those absorbent packs on Amazon or anywhere that you may find them. They're pretty inexpensive. Or you can save the ones that you get from your, your packaged goods. Sometimes they, they come with furniture or even packaged food or your vitamins. So you can just keep them in there in the jar and keep it in a cool dark area to save your seeds for the following growing season. I want to talk to you guys about uh, that you may want to look out for is 
under and over watering ashitabas because there is one actually the most precious ashitaba i have here it came out uh, from seed the stalks is, is red and so i really want to ensure that i can get some seeds saved from that because it actually started to flower and what happened with this one single plant that came out red from all the seeds from the same plant that i have been growing for all the years it's it's in a spot where it was just getting a lot of uh, more water than usual i did not expect this here is the red ashitaba i am saying all the prayers i can and giving it positive energy to revive it's actually been looking so much better now what happened was that it got root rotted a little bit so fingers crossed i caught it early enough that it's it's actually looking better like i said so hopefully it'll continue to grow because it's starting to flower and i really want to save the seeds on this one this is a really unique one that came out of the same batch of seeds from the same you know ashitabas that's been growing in the garden for like for years but suddenly one out of that batch came out with the deep red uh, brownish red stalk like underneath the stalk it has a more red pigment so this is a really special one I really want to save the seeds of it it started to flower and then all of a sudden I noticed that it started drooping one day I thought it suddenly started drooping because it was a really hot week so I watered it a little more and then it kept getting sadder and what was funny is that usually when you're questioning if the soil is too wet or too dry, you can just, you know, do the trick of like sticking your finger in a couple of inches to see if it's, if it's uh, dry or wet. And uh, when I did that, I noticed that it was really dry. So I started watering a lot more and then it's, the plant got more sad. I started sticking my finger in different parts of the soil and I noticed that the soil was watered uneven. So one part was really wet and another spot was really dry. The issue with this I think is due to the Rama Gotu Kola being in front of the Ashitaba and the Gotu Kola really loves moist soil. And so watering that with the drainage hole coming out of the Gotu Kola pot has gone into you know watering the ashitaba here so i think that's how it caused the root rotting because i was also watering the ashitaba on top of the drainage hole that was flushing out of the the rauma ashitaba generally likes the soil to stay moist it's just that it doesn't like it to be soaking wet all the time you know it just doesn't give them room to breathe the ashitaba actually has a deep tap root so even if it dries out quite a lot and it will look droopy if you give it enough water it would perk back up by evening or like the next day or two depending on how long the, the soil has been staying dry for but usually because of a a deep root system you want to be careful with over watering and that's exactly a really great example this precious ashitaba has set for me to learn i can see that the bottom trunk there part of it was like rotting away in fact it had a little bit of like a white like moldy issue I'm gonna do a light spray on it I can do like a little bit of like a soap water mixture with some tea tree oil um, just to help kill the bacteria right now I'm definitely cutting back on watering and uh, just misting the leaves to make sure it gets enough moisture in different parts you know but keeping water away from the soil right now for it it to naturally dry out a little bit hopefully i did not do too much damage to the roots uh, i don't think i did though because uh, like i said the top part here is looking better it's actually perking up more than the other day oh <sighs> that's just what happens in the garden right trial and error and you make sure you learn from it though <laughs> well that's it to this video hope this will help you guys out if you're growing some ashitabas, let me know how yours is doing or if you're looking to grow them, be sure to go check out my plant and seed shop, which I will link down below for you guys. And hey, if you enjoyed content like this, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and to hit the bell notification button. Thank you all so much for joining in with me today. I shall see you right back here in the next video. Bye guys.